This is tutorial 4C. If we have a bit of a closer look to um, the Risa round panner, uh, we have in the middle here in the center, that's the standard default situation, we have the puck, as it's called, which we can move around and we can easily uh, drag the sound in the sound field. Um, we can make a short demonstration with this. If we take a mono file, which I'm going to play on this track, then I'm gonna shift, double click to have a time selection. And we can now play this item back. As you can see or hear, it is only in the middle. We can move it to the left. We can move it to the right. And we can move it to the back. And we can move it to the other side of the surround. So, as you can see here in the playback, we can open the down mixer for you. You can see that the signal is being played back. And it's still audible if we go to the left front. If we go to the right front to the back, and to the middle. Um, this is all audible, we can hear it because um, we are going to play it through our playback 2.0. If we play it back through the playback 5.1, which I can show you right here, quickly show with a special meter for that, which shows six channels. The signal is still there, but it's not audible anymore. If we move it now to the left, it will be audible on your headphones or on your laptop. If we move it to the right, it will also be audible to the uh, through your laptop speakers. But if we move it back to the surround channels, you can see the signal is still there, but you cannot hear it. This is because it's playbacked through the 5.1 channel, and this will only uh, show channel one and channel two, which are left and right, and the other channels are just ending in oblivion. So, we can put it back here and we can make it audible again in the center. So that's how this panner is basically working. Then it might be nice to have a look at the stereo panner. We'll have a stereo channel for that on a stereo channel, so we can easily play it back here. In the resurround pan we have two pucks, which is uh, this one, number one, and this one, number two. And uh, we can move them separately as I just did, and there's also the possibility to move them together. How do we do that? Uh, we uh, press the command button and click on the first puck, and then while having the command button pressed, we click on the second, so we select them both, and then we can start moving them around. Because if we have a stereo signal, sometimes it is very handy and very nice to have a um, signal which is audible on both channels and a bit symmetrical. To comply with this symmetry, the pucks are placed uh, mirrored over the y-axis, so 
we can just move them closer together or farther apart as to taste. And if we would like to move them together both, we can take out the respect XYZ flip um, and then we can just move them around together. One nice feature of the re-surround pen is that uh, the maximum distance is recorded. So if we would move this to one side, the number two puck cannot go any further, but the number one puck can. And if we pull this back, then the number two puck stays at the original distance and then moves along with the number one puck. Then it's not always necessary to move uh, in two directions. Uh, to um, ease that, there is a tick button with a 1D edit. And if we use that, we can just move around our mouse, but the pucks will stay on one axis, depending on what is the first direction. So if I move it down, then I can just also move the cursor in the X direction, but the pucks will stay at the same place. So there is one more thing to talk about. We have been talking about left and right and uh, center, and we have been talking about the surround channels. Um, there is one more topic which is going to be uh, addressed in uh, one of the following tutorials, and that is the of the low frequency uh, component. That is the 0.1 component in the 5.1. Um, as this is a bit of a special subject and we are basically not going to use the low frequency fader which would be around here. As you can see in the number 4 channel here, there is a low frequency component available. Um, but we have a sort of better setup in which we can address the dynamics and the frequency uh, behavior a little bit better and this is going to be handled in one of the following tutorials. Okay, that was that. Uh, thanks for your attention, and um, I hope to see you back in the next tutorial.